Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking in Rome. Ancient Rome is fascinating and intriguing. Now I've recently published a video on Roman footwear specifically focusing on the famous Caligae, so Roman military boots. And this video is a sort of add-on to that video, so if you haven't watched that video, you'll find a link in the description below. Now to cut a long story short, quite a lot of people have asked me the question, did Roman soldiers wear socks? in winter. Because here's the thing, imagine Roman soldiers walking through the meadows of Britannia or through the Germanic forests without any protection for their feet while wearing open boots. A quick answer to that question is, yes, socks existed. And although this goes against the common image that some reenactment societies portray of the Romans always dressed in single tunic and open boots whatever the weather, regardless of the elements scouring around, well, that would definitely not be the case. Winter soldier clothing existed. So, dressing appropriately for the elements and temperature means health. And it goes without saying that a healthy soldier is a more effective soldier. Having your soldiers getting frostbite would be, in terms of preparation, very shoddy work. And as a historical YouTuber, it behooves me to clear the waters. Roman soldiers were pros, they didn't act rashly. Everything was carefully planned and organised. You see, socks, among other things, weren't the only solution to the problem during the winter. There were other ways to keep your feet warm, which we will discuss later. But yes, socks were a possibility. Socks in Latin were called udones and there are a few sources that mention them. One of the most famous ones is from the writing tablets from Windolanda, written on fragments of thin, mall, wooden leaf tablets with carbon-based ink, which date to the 1st and 2nd century AD, roughly contemporary with Adrian's Wall, a rich source of information about life on the frontier of Northern Britain. Now, some of the advantages of wearing socks while using military books are quite obvious. First, your feet are warmer. And secondly, and also very important, it helps against chafing due to slithering of the thongs or straps of the leather boots. However, although it might sound counterintuitive, there would also be disadvantages of wearing socks while using an open boot design. One of the main advantages of open boots is that air can circulate and they are free draining. Now imagine that you are crossing a river and your feet get all wet. Well, if you're wearing socks, the draining, the uh, drying of the feet is going to take a lot longer because of the fact that now your socks are completely full of water. Whereas if you're not wearing anything apart from your leather boots, then because of the air circulating, your skin will get dry very quickly. So when deciding wearing socks, you would lose that advantage. So I think that the Legion would also choose if it, were, if it were the case to wear socks or not, depending on the sort of geography and terrain that they were going to march on. Fun fact, you know the Praetorian Guard, the Praetorians, the elite unit, the bodyguards of the Emperor, where well, there is cultural evidence that demonstrates that they also wore socks. Now what's interesting is that sometimes they are shown wearing socks that were missing both the toe and the heel. So most likely these socks were worn for two reasons, not really for the winter, not really for warmth, but for comfort and fashion. Now when you say fashion in ancient Rome, one thing you've got to understand is that when talking socks, what we understand, and this would have included the Praetorians too, it would have meant to wear socks of contrasting colours. Contrasting colours. So you know when you wake up in the morning and you're all sleepy, you, you open up that mess of a drawer you've got and you end up wearing a blue sock and a black sock and someone makes fun of you? Well, next time that happens, you can tell them with a straight face, Praetorian inside me, Praetorian inside. And talking about Romans, do you like my t-shirt? This is a Metatron original gladiatorial t-shirt, Secutor class. So come on, don't be a muppet, get one now, link in the description below. You're gonna look great in it, come on, click it. Come on! We have a few remaining socks from Roman times that can give us an idea on how they made them. In the north of England, we have a single sock found at the site of Windolanda, made of two pieces of wool tacked together. The sock is frayed and shows visible sign of tear. It is 16 centimeters long and 7 centimeters wide, so it probably belonged to a child. On the other hand, if we look at socks from Roman Egypt, we see a more complex design, and one could say an early form of knitting, or as people call it, cross-knit looping, as it does have some common manufacture bases with netting. These socks reach above the ankle and have a gap between the large toe and the other toes to allow a thong 
from the sandals to pass through. The socks are constructed from the toe upward and have different colored bands. Excavations at Antiopolis and Akmin Panopolis show quite a lot of socks, both military and civilian. A fine rough wool specimen made in bands of green, red, blue and orange. Whereas from Akmin Panopolis, archaeologists recovered specimens that were calf length with a string around the upper edge for fastening. Among other colours we've got black and green socks for cavalry men and also in the horseman graves woolen specimen with green soles and full green socks with yellow tips were found. But how common were socks among the Roman soldiers? Interestingly enough, a papyrus from Masada lists them with other items of clothing, all of which, including the socks, should be deducted from the soldier's pay. So what this probably means is that socks were issued and therefore rather common. So here's another interesting piece of information. Socks were not the only way in which you could keep your feet warm during winter. There was another way that is documented and attested and it's using rabbit skin wrappings. What this means is that you would have a rabbit skin and then you would just wrap it around your feet a few times and then you would wear it continuously for a few weeks, even four weeks possibly, and it would keep your feet warm would sort of work similarly to how a sock does but of course it would be much more of a less um, expensive we could say or anyways not the socks would be expensive but definitely a sort of use and then throw away solution a sort of momentary solution so perhaps if you didn't have a very long winter or perhaps the winter was coming to an end and you perhaps didn't want to use your socks or you didn't even have socks or perhaps you lost your socks for whatever reasons then you could use rabbit skin wrappings and after the four weeks would be done you would just take them and throw them away. Okay so to conclude yes socks existed we know that and we do have some information but unfortunately we don't have enough data to formulate a coherent uh, discussion uh, concerning the details regarding socks so there are still a lot of questions that remain unanswered but this is also uh, what is really interesting of the academic approach the scientific approach always keep an open mind don't f uh, fixate on the things you know now but always be open to the, to the possibility that new data new research and new discoveries can open up complete new windows to the past and it needs to be something interesting it needs to be something fascinating intriguing and mesmerizing this is the beauty of the study of the past accept what we have do it professionally but on the other hand always keep an open mind because with new data comes new information which could also alter our overall understanding of how for example in this case the Roman machina worked all right, noble ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're still not yet members of this community, please become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.